Friday. Here we are again. We've made it through another week and we are full sail right on into the weekend. And I got to tell you, I'm really looking forward to it. This is the first weekend in a while where I plan, like I literally have it written down in my agenda to do nothing. <laughs> Right? I very rarely get to say that, but I actually penciled it in for myself. I'm like, this weekend, I'm going to sleep late, I'm going to wear my pajamas, and I am going to relax. Because you know what? Next weekend on Sunday, I will be on a plane headed out to Tucson for an amazing adventure. So I'm going to kind of do a little self-care this weekend and get myself ready to go. Hi, everybody. Hi, Karen, Joan, Terry. And Miss Lena is here as well. So, how has everyone's week been so far, right? I say so far because we still have a few hours before we can officially call it the weekend, depending on what side of the country you are on. We've got about four hours here at five o'clock. I'm, I'm marking it down. It's officially the weekend. So, anyway, today we have a really cool project for you guys. Um, this project was originally, and some of you may have seen this, this project was originally named something else in the very beginning when I posted the event, but it was only for a minute, like just for a second. And then we went in, or I went in rather, and changed the name of it because I was having a conversation with my good friend, Lena, who is also a fabulous jewelry designer, I might add. Um, and she was saying that this looks very much like Cinderella's carriage, and I agreed with her. I was like, I didn't even realize it, but yeah, it does. So we changed the name of this, this project is going to be very similar to the wire weaving project that we did a few weeks ago. I don't know if you guys remember that one or not. I'm sure that you do because a lot of you recreated it. It was the rising star pendant that we did with some of those beautiful blue Swarovski beads from Jesse James Beads. And um, it was wire weaving, very simple, like a very beginner kind of wire weaving project. And um, we're gonna do the same wire weaving project today. I'm just gonna show you kind of like the inverted version of what we did. So we're gonna do it a little bit different. It's pretty much the same technique, but practice makes perfect, right? So um, this is not new information, but this might be a good place for some of you who didn't try the last wire weaving project that we did. You might wanna take the plunge and try this one. This one, again, is super, super easy as far as the weaving is concerned. And then really all you're going to need to do is just shape this into the pendant that you want it to be. And you can actually make this shape any that you want to. We're going to keep it kind of circular. Um, but if circles are not your thing, you want to do ovals, you can totally do that as well. A um, couple of things to mention before we get started. So it is free shipping Friday over on Jesse James Speeds. You guys take advantage of free shipping for... Um, absolutely no minimum order, which I love it. I love it when it is like that. So free shipping, spreading the love on Jesse James Beads. You guys, there's no minimum order and you don't even need a coupon code. So take advantage. If you've got your eye on some of those fabulous Jesse James Beads, you are going to want to take advantage of the free shipping. So speaking of Jesse James Beads, that's what we're using today as always, because I am such a huge fan, right? <laughs> Okay, so we are using some of the beads that we used yesterday, but um, I'm changing it up a little bit. So this is one of the strands from the Galentine's Day collection at Jesse James Beads. And this middle bead here, let me tell you the name of the strand because I always get it wrong, BFF. I don't know why I cannot remember that. So you can get this, excuse me, you can get the strand by itself or you can get the bundle. Also have the mini mix here. We're gonna get take some beads out of the mini mix. But when I first saw this strand, I immediately was inspired by the boho bead that is in the center. Now, I don't know how well that is coming across on camera, but you see that round right there? It's very holographic and it really plays on <clears throat> the blues that are in this strand and really just ties everything together, which they are phenomenal at doing anyway. But that one bead, it just really, really spoke to me. And that's one of my favorite things about the Jesse James Beads, right? Because they make these beautiful strands and these beautiful mixes, mixes, excuse me. But sometimes you come across just that one bead that just totally sparks your imagination, right? That's how I felt about this one bead. So we're really going to show this bead off 
and that's going to be really the focal of our pendant. And then from the mini mix that goes along with that strand, there are some beautiful tincha beads up here. I almost used a tincha bead, but I really wanted to show off that beautiful boho bead. But there are some Swarovski um, bicones and some really awesome Swarovski pearls that are in this top tier. We're going to use some of those too as some accents along the bottom of this pendant. Hi, Bethany. Hi, JD. So good to see you guys. I am always excited to spend my Fridays with you guys. Um, I love these videos in general, right? But Friday, it always marks like the end of a week. Like I feel like once I get to this point, I've really accomplished something. <laughs> I can like take stock in the rest of the week and know that everything we got here, right? Everything worked out and we made it even when things were hard. Okay, so let's flip around and get to our project. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the beads apart. I'm going to give you a kind of an up close look. Hi, Kathy. Sorry, you guys. This tripod keeps, uh, I don't know, it's nothing but frustration with it. I've, I've just about had <laughs> my fill. If you guys have any recommendations for tripods, please let me know because I, I cannot seem to get a win with a tripod. Okay, so just giving you an up close look of that middle bead. Look at that guy, that beautiful pink boho bead. That's what we're gonna be using. That's gonna be the showstopper. Oh, uh, don't apologize, Kathy. You are not late. You haven't missed anything yet. We're just getting started here. All right, so this guy, this is gonna be the showstopper. Isn't it beautiful? It really needed its own piece of jewelry. So that's what I'm gonna give it. And I'm going to trim off the end here and we're gonna pull that off so that we have it. And the cool thing is, is that I still have all of these beads left over to make matching bracelets and earrings with this as well, which I actually plan to do later this afternoon because this is one of those pendants. You guys know, I tell you every once in a while I make something and I make it just for me. That's what this pendant is. This was, <laughs> this, I just happened to be sharing it with you guys, but this one is just for me. This is one I'm actually going to be wearing. So all right, there's that guy, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna sit that to the side and we are gonna open up the mini mix and you guys know how I do, I have to, I can't rip the package, such a weirdo, to keep the integrity of the whole thing. <laughs> All right, so, as far as this pennant is concerned, you could use any, any of the amazing beads that are in this mix but we're gonna focus on these beautiful Swarovskis and I probably will turn the Tincha into some matching earrings because they are awesome. All right, so I'm gonna use some of the Swarovski bicones and we're gonna use one of these Swarovski pearls. These are really, really beautiful pearl. It is blue, but it also has like that kind of funny shimmer finish to it so that it has, and I don't know that I'd even call it shimmery and I'm at a lack for a better word for this, but it has some very definite pink and purple in it as well. So it definitely has that color shift that is amazing. All right. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Debbie's making some recommendations for tripods for me. I really, really appreciate that. The problem is, is that I've got to have a tripod that is able to move and it not have to be reset, you know what I'm saying? Because I have to flip you guys around and the iPad has to face downwards and it's a whole thing, so. All right, I'm gonna sit the beads to the side. We've got those ready to go. We are gonna start working on the pendant itself. So what you are gonna need for this, very similar to the last wire weaving that we did, you're gonna need two pieces of 18 gauge wire. I recommend the 18 gauge because even though this is a sturdy wire, it's still going to be movable enough for you to get this into the shape that you want it, okay? So one of the pieces needs to be five inches long and your second piece needs to be about three and a half inches long. You can adjust this however you want to. Um, you can make this bigger, make this smaller, but you definitely want there to be about... I'd say an inch and a half difference in the two pieces, okay? If not a full two inches. So again, five inches on the longer one, three and a half inches on the smaller. 
So let's start with a smaller piece. We're just gonna do some things to the ends of this and then we are going to wire wrap these together. And we are going to wire wrap these straight. That was one of the things that a lot of you guys mentioned the last time we did a wire weaving project was that you didn't realize that the wire weaving happened while the wires were straight. Any opportunity that I can get to do it that way, I do. I just find that if I can get away with wire weaving straight pieces of wire and then form them into the shape, I have a much easier time at the wire weaving. Wire weaving in curves and circular shapes and even, um, you know, where you've got definite bends in the wire, that really to me is more considered a um, an intermediate to an advanced type of wire weaving. So definitely practice it this way before you get crazy with all of the shapes, okay? All right, so we're using our small bell making pliers for this. We're gonna use both mandrels on the pliers. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna use the smaller mandrel on the pliers and we're gonna come right to the end of the wire and we're gonna roll back just to create a closed loop on the end of our wire. Okay, now I'm going to come down here to the other end. And I'm going to do the exact same thing, rolling back towards the one that we just made. So they're going to be facing each other. Okay, so now when you look at it, this is what you've got. Okay, all right, so now we're going to use the larger bell on the pliers. I'm going to grab the wire so that the loop that we just made is sitting up against the barrel of the pliers, right? And now we're going to roll backwards using the larger barrel to create this kind of shepherd's hook shape. Okay, we're gonna repeat that on the other side. Okay, just rolling back. Okay, now, before we go any further with this, I do wanna put this on my block. We are gonna shape this a bit um, later, and so you don't wanna work hard in this fully but I do want to work hard on it just a tiny bit, just so that I don't have to worry so much that my fingers are gonna heat it up and make major bends out of it while we're doing the weaving, okay? So just put it on your still block and hit it with a nylon hammer. Don't use a chasing hammer, the flat end of a chasing hammer, unless you want to actually flatten the surface of your wire. So we're just gonna flatten, I'm sorry, not flatten, work harden just a little bit. Flip it over, be sure you do both sides. All right, that should be plenty to get started. Again, it's that 18 gauge wire, so it's already pretty strong, but we do wanna just give it a little extra security, right, with the, with the additional work hardening. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to wire wrap these two pieces together, and of course, now that we have made the shepherd's hooks on each end of the smaller piece, this is a really, really short section. And we're actually going to trim down the longer section as well, but we want to wait until after we get it into the shape that we want before we start cutting away on the longer piece. So again, just like the one that we did before, we don't have a very long amount where we have to do the wire weaving. It's just going to be a short amount, so we're going to do the entire thing, okay? All right. To do the weaving, we're using 26 gauge wire. I'm using artistic wire. You can use German style wire for this. It's really up to you. It makes no difference. Um, the artistic wire is just what I had on hand. It's a good start, you know. 26 gauge wire is one of those that is, because it is so thin, it gives people a lot of trouble until you get the hang of it. So be patient with yourself, of course, as always. Give yourself some grace when it comes to working with the 26 gauge wire. It's gonna want to kink up on the ends, okay? All right, so to get started, we're gonna come to the larger piece and let's see what direction. All right, so I'm actually gonna lay this behind because I want the wire wrapping to be coming up from the bottom and going towards the back, okay? So I'm going in this direction with my wire. So I initially have placed the wire to the back of the 18 gauge piece, okay? And we just want to get this anchored on so I'm just gonna take the tail end of the wire and I'm going to wire wrap it around about four times, okay? And that actually turned out to be five. That's all right, we're good with it. I'm not mad at it. I'm gonna squeeze those together with my pliers, okay? Now, 
with the tail, I'm just gonna take it and bend it out this way and just hold on to it. You don't have to cut it yet. In fact, I kind of recommend that you don't cut it at first because if you do, then your wire wraps have a tendency to spin, right, on this 18 gauge wire because they're not fully wrapped on there and secure yet. And so just to save yourself some trouble, just hold on to that tail. It's gonna keep these guys in place so you don't have to fight with them, okay? All right, so the wire weave is gonna be just the exact same as we did before. So we're doing two wraps, right, on the 18 gauge wire, and then two wraps around both. Two wraps on the bottom, they're both 18 gauge, I'm sorry, you know what I mean, the bottom and the top. So two wraps on the bottom, two wraps around both. Two wraps on the bottom, two wraps around both. Go slow, okay? So I have the wire anchored here, I'm gonna sit the other piece of wire on top and notice I'm not necessarily in the middle of this piece the long piece that's okay we can adjust we're gonna cut some of it off totally fine at this point in the beginning don't worry about things like that okay all right so taking the 26 gauge wire and I'm going around twice both pieces of wire and just, just moving those two wraps together with my fingers, okay? All right. Now, I'll give myself a little bit of space in between there. Going to hook through both. I mean, I'm sorry, not hook through both. Going between the two wires, right? Bring that down with my finger, okay? That was once and twice, okay? Pushing it down with my fingers, okay? So that's what we've got so far. Now remember, when we did this before, remember what I said about using tension on the 26 gauge wire, right? So you wanna try to use as even amount of tension as possible between the two. What's gonna end up happening is you're gonna keep everything nice and straight. The spaces between your wires are gonna be consistent, but it's also gonna help you bring that wire when you need to go between the two, it's gonna help you bring it down. So you're actually gonna pull. As you pull that wire down, it's gonna to help to tighten it up and bring it right down here where you need it to be. At least getting it very, very close so that you can continue to push it down with your fingers, okay? So keep the tension on that. Now, between the two, Notice how I'm pulling, keeping that tension, pulling really tight. Going around a second time between the two, pushing down with my fingernail, okay? Now I'm going around both, okay? Same thing, between the two, pulling down, between the two, and pulling down. Every once in a while, stop and straighten out your 26 gauge wire so that it doesn't kink up on you, okay? Because it will, particularly if it's underneath your arm or down here underneath the table, it's doing crazy things while you're working and you just wanna always check on it, okay? So now I'm gonna go around both again, once, twice, okay? And again, you're gonna see, just like in the, the time we did it before, my fingers are really warming up the wire, so I'm starting to get some bends. That's okay, we're gonna straighten it all back out in the end. So just hold on tight, don't worry about what else is happening. We can, all of those things we can fix, okay? So that's one, and that's one. Squeeze them with your fingers, okay? Keep going, around both, around both. Okay, now we're gonna do around just the one and around just the one. Spread these apart if you need to to give yourself plenty of room here because we're gonna squeeze it back down once we get down here with the wire wrapping. It's okay to open it up and give yourself room to work. Don't feel like you have to work in a, a, you know, a little area that is so tiny, right? You don't have to keep it that way. Eventually it'll be that way when we get there. Don't worry about it. Give yourself room. I feel like that's a mistake that a lot of people make in the beginning by not giving themselves enough room to make those wire weaves. Okay, so that last one went around both. 
Now we're coming between the two, between the two. So when I, when I go between the two, right, I put my thumb right about here and I really push that wire. See how that happened? Show it to you again here in just a second. Around both, around both, okay? Now we're just going around the one. So I pull it out sideways to give myself plenty of room to get between both wires. Whoops, sorry. Okay, putting my thumb here and really pushing and pulling at the same time to pull that wire down tight. Same thing, between the two, using my thumb, pushing that wire down. All right, keep going around both, around both. Okay, between the two and between, okay? Now remember, like I said before, when we did this, that once you get the hang of this rhythm, right, it'll start to work up pretty quickly. So I've, I've sped up just a little bit, okay? Definitely do wanna stop though and check and make sure that the wraps are lining up nice and neat. And once you get the hang of it, then you can kind of change up the weave a little bit, right? Instead of doing two on the bottom and two around both, try two on the bottom, three around both, or three on the bottom and five around both. Really mix it up and see how it feels because it's going to create a different strength depending on the weave of the wires that you are binding together, right? So they're all gonna behave a little bit differently. Take all of that into consideration when you're playing around with it. And once you master two, add a third wire. See what you can do with a third wire. When you get good at three, add in a third or a fourth or a fifth. You can really start to work up really wide sections of wire weaving that, um, you know, you can turn into really amazing designs. And if you break it down into simple steps, bite-sized digestible pieces like this, then you are less overwhelmed <laughs> when you are working on a really large project, right? So from now on, once you get the hang of this, when you're looking at other people's wire weaving work and it looks so intricate and so involved, Remember that they started in a section this small, right? You gotta start somewhere, break it down. Start noticing all of the little individual sections of the work and it becomes less scary, I feel like, okay? All right, so around both this time. And now we're getting in here where it's a little tight because we've got that shepherd's hook. That's okay, gonna take it slow go underneath right that loop around both and underneath the loop just take your time you can raise that up just a tiny bit if you want to just remember that any adjustments that you make here you just want to put it back right so if you open that up a bit you want to be sure that you when you get finished that you push this back down again so that it's in the spot where you want it to be okay so around just the bottom around both around the bottom and around both, okay? Now we're getting pretty close to the end here. Okay, I really want to try to stop in the same place where I started. So right before we have that curve in the shepherd's hook, that's where we wanna stop with the wire weaving, okay? And we will finish out with about four or five wraps just on this bottom wire, okay? Again, keeping all that tension exactly the same, okay? All right, we're getting close here. All right, so I'm gonna call that good for the doubles. Now I'm gonna finish this out with about four or five wraps just on this bottom wire, okay? Just so that it really looks more like the one over on the other end, okay? And you can see it's not perfect. There's some bends here. My fingers have really heated up the, the metal, 
So we're going to flatten this back out a bit. We're actually going to put this on our block. Um, we're going to bite down on this with our nylon jaw pliers first. But before we do any of that, we need to come in and trim off the tails. And I recommend trimming, of course, on the back of your piece. Okay. And then you definitely want to make sure that your tail is laying nice and flat on the wire so that it's not sticking up. So I'm going to get caught on anything. And again, on the other side. Okay. Now I have some leftovers. We're gonna use some more of this 26 gauge wire here in just a bit. So, all right, the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to bite down on this with the nylon jaw pliers, just working up and down a few times on the piece. This is really gonna kinda of close up any of the spaces that you may have in the wire weave itself, okay? Kind of helps to flatten everything out then i'm going to hold on and try to straighten out any of the little bends that are in the wire on the tails on either side okay all right so try to slide that down to the middle a little bit more should have done that a little bit before we got to this point that's okay okay so now i'm going to put this on my block and we are going to Tap on this again with our nylon hammer, and we're not gonna go to town on it. We're just doing a little bit along the wire weave, okay? You wanna be sure that you do both sides. Okay, now we are ready to start shaping this into our circle. Now, let me show you. This is kind of where we're going. And if you'll notice, it's not a perfect circle. This is more of like an egg shape, right? This is sort of a teardrop shape. And <clears throat> if you end up with more of a circle, that's totally fine. You can adjust this however you want to. You can really kind of form this into whatever shape you want, but this is really kind of where we're going. That's what's gonna give it that kind of pumpkin carriage shape, right? All right, so to do that, I'm gonna bring out my artistic wire mandrel. I have the round mandrel attachment to this. You don't have to use this if you don't want to. You can use anything that is round. You can even use the top of your hammer for this. All we're looking for is just something to help us form that curved shape, okay? And I don't know if you remember, but the last time we did this, I talked about when you start to curve the wire, the two wires are gonna want to kind of wiggle against each other and make a funny shape. They're gonna wanna try to twist out of the flat shape that we have them in. That's okay, because we can always fix it back, okay? Be patient. Don't worry about it so much. So I like to take my fingers right at the shepherd's hooks on either side and lay this, lay my mandrel on the table Okay, lay it down flat and then push down. Push down the end that you opened up. Oh, thank you. So, Jane, I'm so glad you're here, Jane. <laughs> Jane is reminding me, before we do this part, to push this back down. Remember, we opened this up just a little bit so that we could get in between there. Don't forget to push it back down where you need it to be. And if you wanna over push, right? and then pull it back up, that's really gonna close up the spaces too, okay? So push it behind and then pull it back up. Thank you, Jane. All right, now, holding on to both of those with either hand, right, in my first finger and my thumb, I'm gonna lay this against the mandrel and very gently guide this into a curved shape. And it's not going to want to be very curved at first. It's going to want to be this kind of weird V shape. That's okay. Okay. Because now we're going to pick it up and we're going to work on each side individually. Okay. So I'm going to work on this side. Pushing that wire down against the surface of the mandrel going really, really slow. I'm going to take that wire once I get to just the single wire. And I'm going to... Go ahead and take it all the way around, right, to make a ring shape. We're going to pull it back out of that shape a little bit here at the end because we're going to trim some of this off, but it's fine to go ahead and have that nice circle shape, right? There's nothing wrong with working with that. 
All right, putting it back on. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Very slowly, very gently, I'm gonna push that against the surface of the mandrel. And then I'm gonna guide that wire all the way around to finish out our circular shape, okay? Taking it off the tool. Now, one thing I noticed immediately was look at what's happened, okay? It's nice and flat here, but then we start to get a curve in it. That's okay. I'm gonna come in with the nylon jaw pliers. I'm just gonna bite down on it and flatten it all back out the way I want it to be. No problem, right? And I'm gonna take those wire wraps and kind of push those down with my fingers. Okay, so we've got a pretty good circular shape going on here. And once we make some adjustments up here at the top, it's really gonna turn more into this egg shape. That's totally fine. All right, so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna come in with our chain nose pliers. You can use bit and chain nose pliers for this if you want, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna bite down on both of those wires right at the top, right? What I consider to be the middle and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're gonna trim some of this off so it's okay. And I, you guys are looking at this upside down, so am I. <laughs> no worries. All right, I'm gonna take one of the sides of the wire and very gently with my fingernail, raise it up away from the circle here and then I'm going to bend it out this way, back towards me, okay? So now when you're looking at it head on, that's what you've got, okay? That's pretty close to the center where that bend is. It's not a perfect straight bend. I do wanna work on it just a little bit to try to get it as sharp as I can. Now I've got something visual that I can use for the other side, okay? So I'm gonna come into the other side with my chain nose pliers and actually it's gonna help you to be, come to the back with your chain nose pliers. And you wanna grab onto the back wire right next to where the bend in the front wire is, right? Okay, and very gently, like whoops, if I get my fingers in there, we're gonna bend the other wire straight up and down too, okay? All right, now, you can see it's not perfect. One of them's longer than the other one, totally fine. Not a problem. Come in with your pliers, straighten that up as much as you can, okay? And they're kind of overlapping each other, that's fine too. We're gonna make some adjustments here and you're never even gonna know that any of that ever happened. But notice that now we have less of a circle and more of an egg shape. That's exactly what we want, okay? Now, we want to take the two pieces of the wire. You can do this a lot of different ways. You could wire wrap here, you know, do a wrapped loop and trim off one of these. You could do a simple loop. A lot of different things that you can do at the top of this. Um, this is just one of many techniques of, of things you can do, okay? We're gonna come in with the small bell making pliers again. And we're gonna use the small mandrel of the pliers and we're gonna take both sides of this wire and we're gonna turn it to the back, right? We're gonna create two separate loops going towards the back, okay? But first we need to trim some of this off. So we are going to come in with our ruler. And we want both of these pieces of wire here. Put it up here a little bit better. We want both pieces of the wire to be, I can't remember if it's three fourths of an inch or, <laughs> or a half inch. You know what? Let's practice it on a piece just because I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. Okay. So if it is half of an inch, I'm just holding it with my finger. I'm really just making a measurement because I wanna be sure that I have enough to roll back. Okay, the half inch is for the larger mandrel. So let's see, what does the half inch for the smaller side do? <laughs> I should have written this down. All right, so just under. All right, so place this on your ruler, right? Find the half inch mark 
okay? And you just wanna come back maybe a notch right below and trim that off, okay? And now you just wanna kinda eyeball it with the other one, line them up if you want to, and just make sure they're both the same size, trim that other one off so that they both match, okay? One of them still looks a little bit longer because it's towards the back. Okay, coming in with the small bell making pliers, we're gonna take the one that's on the back, just because it's the easiest one to get to at the moment, okay? We're grabbing it between the barrel of the pliers using the smaller mandrel, and we're gonna roll backwards. Okay? Just like that. Okay? Now, I moved them. See how this one is still is towards the back? I'm gonna move them side by side just so that I can now get a hold of the other one. And it's probably gonna be easier to roll towards yourself with this one. It's just kind of awkward, whatever works for you, but you wanna do the exact same thing with the other end, okay? And roll a loop back that way too, okay? So now you've got two loops going to the back. And you can come in with your pliers and adjust these a little bit if you want to. If you want them more up and down or if you want them more at an angle, it's totally up to you. But we want them to sit as close together as possible. Okay. Linda, yes, thank you. I know I had it somewhere. A half inch for the smaller mandrel. I need to, I need to like write it in really big letters and put it somewhere. So a half an inch of wire for the smaller mandrel and three fourths of an inch for the larger mandrel. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. That's awesome. Okay. So now this part of the pendant is completely done, right? We've got it just like we wanted it to. And actually I could turn these into some really awesome earrings, but we're going to stick with the plan and we are going to turn this into a pendant. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a piece of that 26 gauge wire that we had left over. I'm going to sit the boho bead to the side because what we want to do is we want to string some beads here between these two loops and we're going to use a piece of the 26 gauge wire to do that. And again, this is another part of this where you can come in with your pliers very gently, open up the loop so that you have enough room to get in between there. See with your 26 gauge wire, it just might help you a little bit, okay? We wanna anchor this wire to the loop. So we wanna wrap around about three or four times. And those first wraps are gonna be a little messy. That's okay, you can squeeze them together with your pliers, no problem. And just flip it over however it's easier for you to work with it. Okay, you just really wanna anchor that wire really well. Okay. And bring those together. Okay, so now I'm gonna to come to the back and I'm gonna trim off the tail, get that out of the way because it is really kind of causing me to get a little confused <laughs> under these lights, all of that glare. All right, I'm gonna close my loop back. Okay, now we're gonna thread on our beads and we are going to thread on four bicones and a Swarovski Pearl as well. Actually, I think I'm going to do the blue first. So I'm going to throw it on a blue, the pink, the pearl, another pink, and the blue. You can change that up however you want to. If you want the blue on either side of the blue, whatever works for you. Okay. So now I'm going to come around here to the other side. And again, I'm gonna take my pliers very gently, open that up just so that I can get the wire right in there and I don't have to fight with it so much, okay? And I'm just gonna wire wrap to this side as well, about three times, four times, whatever makes you happy, right? To secure the other side.
Now I'm using a really long piece of this 26 gauge wire. When you're working in small sections like this, it'll probably be easier for you, particularly if you're a beginner, to use a smaller piece of the wire. Um, having all that extra wire in the way can really be an extra frustration. So you definitely don't need all of this, right? All right, I'm gonna trim the tail off. Flip it back around here to the front, close that back. And we're taking a good look at it. All right, so at this point, we're ready to add our bead here in the center, but if you wanted to take this to the next level, there's a couple of different things you could do. You could utilize these loops on either side even more and hang dangles coming down from either side. You could do even more beaded drapes, right? Going between the two, just coming down as like a tier. A lot of different things you can do just on the bottom alone, okay? So keep that in mind because you could take this way over the top and make it extra, extra fabulous if you wanted to. So we are going to show off this beautiful boho bead. That's going to be the center. That's really going to be kind of the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This is definitely the icing on the cake for me. <laughs> and Jane says, so good. It's so good. All right. So we're going to take our boho bead and we're going to use a piece of do, 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 22 gauge wire, except that I have lost mine. Let me grab some. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna create that knotted head pin that we do very, very often. Just gonna cut myself a small little piece of 22 gauge wire to do this. And <clears throat> we're gonna bring in, if I can find them, I've made such a mess here. Yes, Terry said tassels would be cute hanging from the, it absolutely would. And you know what? There are some really beautiful tassels in the Jesse James Beads two tier. So there are the blue ones and then there are those floral ones. Those look really beautiful hanging from that as well. Okay, so grabbing the tip of the wire, 22 gauge wire, tip of the round nose pliers. We're gonna roll it around the tip of the pliers once and then a second time directly underneath that first roll around, right? We're gonna stop right where we see where we have the wire end. Before you take it off of the tool, you want to bend it out this direction, kind of straighten out your wire. Taking it off of the pliers, now we're gonna take the tail end of the wire and we are going to thread it through the two loops that we made, okay? And now we're gonna come in with our nylon jaw pliers and grab right next to the two loops and take another pair of pliers grab the tail end of the wire and pull it through. Okay, we've got our cute little knot here and we're gonna thread on our bead. Okay, now we're just gonna do a wraps loop at the top. So we're gonna grab that wire right as it is exiting the bead with our chain nose pliers. We're gonna bend 90 degrees. Now we're gonna come in with round nose pliers up and over, roll the pliers around bring that wire on or around to the other side, switch hands, and do about three good wraps at the top of the bead. Okay, taking that off. And now, ooh yeah, Jane says I would use a big tassel. Mm-hmm, I would too. Great big, huge. Ooh, a really sparkly beaded tassel would be awesome too. Okay, so now our bead is ready to go. We're gonna hang this in the center here. And we're gonna do that with a six millimeter jump ring. And the six millimeter jump ring is gonna to go to the back of the loops here. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna open up this six millimeter jump ring and flip your pendant over to the back, thread it through both of those little loops that we created, and then thread on your bead, okay? And then you wanna close this back. Now, if you need the addition of a four millimeter jump ring, I'm going to look at it and just kind of eyeball it here. Close that jump ring back and look at it. Um, 
I don't, I don't. If you needed, if your circle that you, the pendant that you created was a little bit larger and you needed this to, the bead to hang more in the center, then you could give yourself an additional jump ring in here, a little four millimeter, just to kind of line it up so that it's hanging in the center. But that six millimeter jump ring is the perfect size so that our bead really will hang in the middle. Okay, so now we're just gonna do a series of six millimeter jump rings. I'm gonna use three. I don't know what happened to the ones I had grab some. Um, we're going to use three, I believe, three. <laughs> Let's take a look. So this one's going to go this direction, right? And then, no, we're only going to use two because we want this one to go side to side so that we can put, run our chain through it. Okay. All right. So let's do that. Open up our six millimeter jump ring. And again, we're going to thread through, uh-oh, one of those came loose. Let me show you something that I forgot to mention. So this on the back, it came out of one of these. So you want to be sure <laughs> that your loops back here are really, really closed. Because if you don't, your jump rings will do just like mine did and will sneak through there. So make sure you've got closed loops here, okay? All right. Back to our jump rings here. So I'm going to thread a six millimeter jump ring on this direction and go ahead and thread on a second one. Close this back. All right. And we're done. All we're going to do now is just thread it on to some chain. I'm using some of this beautiful ball chain and I'm just going to thread that through. And you know what? I actually think I'm going to add a second set of jump rings to this. Um, and in the original, I did. So see how there's the double loops here, right? So just a design choice to carry that double wire look up into the top of this. I'm going to add two more jump rings to this. And there is absolutely no functionality whatsoever to this. It's just kind of bringing that little tiny bit of the design right up into this part as well. So I'm just gonna add, I'll show you, this is kind of a messy way to look at it at the moment. So I've added two jump rings there. I'm gonna add a, a second jump ring here on this side just because I like the look, right? Not because it needs it, but just because I like it. This really just takes your uh, jump ring and, and instead of it being functional, it now actually becomes part of the design. And so don't ever underestimate the power of your jump rings, right? The smaller jump rings, the larger jump rings can really kind of change things up with just small little changes like that. Okay. So now it, to me, it just feels a little bit more balanced now that I have two here and two here, right? I just like the like, I like the look of that a little bit better. Ooh, yeah, Diane says double the chain. That would be pretty too. So you could take that double element all the way through, right? And double the chain up. That would be really pretty. All right, so I'm gonna turn this around for you guys and I'm gonna hang it up on a bust so that you can see it. And then I'll let you guys get on with the rest of your Friday. The lights just a bit all right all right tripod you guys go flying backwards <laughs> it's that spring-loaded tripod I've got all right so I'll just do a little chat with you while I'm attaching this to the bust here because I didn't put any uh, end findings on the ball chain just because I was figured you know you're gonna use whatever kind of findings you want on this. So that part's not really as, as important. So I don't know why I wrap this on here. Um, so before I let you guys go for the day, just a reminder that on Jesse James Speeds, there is free shipping. There is no minimum purchase and no coupon code needed for that. So definitely take advantage of that. If you are looking at some beads, if you want this exact set of beads, you can still get those. They're part of the Galentine's Day collection. 
And um, of course, there are the others as well. There's the Old Wine and Old Friends strand. That is one of my favorites. That's the first one that we used in this series for Valentine's Day projects. Um, remember, it's the red, the black, and the white. That's like my color scheme. So, of course, that's one of my favorites. All right, so here we go. Oh, I'm messy. Now, tell me that doesn't look like Cinderella's carriage, right? Do you see it? <laughs> you can use your imagination just a little bit, but it does. To me, it reminds me of the carriage, the pumpkin carriage. Oh, it's just really beautiful. And what a fun way to show off that beautiful boho bead. Like that bead, it just needed its own design, right? And sometimes they're like that. Sometimes you just have that one bead and you're just like, wow, it really needs to be shown off all by itself. So there you go. Hope you guys have enjoyed this project. This is a fun one. I like it when we can do things that are a little out of the box. I'm really excited and um, I feel very, uh, what's the word? It's not necessarily inspired. I guess it is inspired. I'm, I'm always inspired by you guys, but I'm always excited when I can spark your imagination. You take a, a technique that I show you that I feel like you might normally be scared to try and I try to break it down for you in a way that makes it easy to digest and easy to translate into your own jewelry making. I love it when that happens. So cannot wait to see what you guys do with this design. If you recreate this, post it, post it on my page if you want to, post it over on Jesse James Bead's Secret Stash Group. If you're not a member there, join because there's so much good inspiration and friendship going on over there. Post it on the Beadalon group because these are Beadalon wires, right? And another wonderful group on Facebook where you can get tons of inspiration. And if you've got questions, it's a great place to ask. So wonderful resources available for Facebook, you guys. Definitely utilize it. Facebook doesn't have to be um, evil, right? Use Facebook to your advantage when it comes to your creativity and talk to your friends, you know, on Facebook. I have made some wonderful friendships with you guys out there. I'm so glad to have gotten to know a lot of you over the past few months. So you make my Fridays worthwhile. You guys have a wonderful rest of your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Take some time for some self-care this weekend. I definitely am going to, and I will see you guys again on Monday for our jewelry making question and answer session 4 p.m. Eastern time. I will post a reminder so you don't have to remember all that right now. I know you've got Friday brain. All right. Have a great one, guys. I'll see you again next week. Bye.